All right, the inspection is complete, and we've got a list of items that need to be repaired from the report. Now what? Alright, let me start by telling you that this video's intent is to take one realtor's view of today's strong seller's market, what can pop up on an inspection report, and what I perceive to be the norm when negotiating on both the buy side and the sell side after an inspection. So just in the last 90 days, more than half of my transactions have had multiple offers on it, whether it's me as a listing agent or I'm on the buy side. Now that's really important for buyers and sellers to know. It impacts your options and leverage as a seller and it impacts your expectations and how you're able to negotiate as a buyer. But we'll come back to this in a bit. When a home inspection is conducted, even a beautifully clean home will come back with a laundry list of 20 to 30 things that need to be repaired or replaced. Most homes are gonna have a shingle or two that have a curled edge. Virtually every tile floor has that one tile with a hairline crack. And any home that's five years old or older is gonna have small settling cracks. It's normal. So as both a home buyer and a home seller, the real question is what's common when negotiating these items? And today as we look at that question, we're looking at the fact that we are in a strong seller's market. All right, first, every transaction is different and every negotiation is different because every person is a little bit different, right? Each individual realtor comes to the table with a different level of expertise and training. And of course, every buyer and seller comes to the transaction with different expectations and past experiences. So as an example, if you have a buyer who bought last, right? The last time they bought was in 2009. Remember back to 2009, it was a strong Strong buyer's market. That buyer might have got a smoking price. And there's a good chance that they also talked the seller into fixing or replacing everything that showed up on that inspection report. So it's understandable, whether it's fair or not, it's understandable that that buyer would come into today's market with the expectations that they had from 2009. And of course, the same is true with any home seller, right? It really depends on your past experiences. All right, but before we keep going, I love putting out valuable videos for home buyers and home sellers. So if you're interested in seeing more, get over there to my Facebook business page, The Joe Rosen Show. I've got loads of content I put out at The Joe Rosen Show on Instagram and give me a follow for tons of great home buying and home selling information. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so in today's strong sellers market, buyers are gonna be expected to fix or take care of most of the smaller repairs that are found in home inspection. Sellers know that they can drop the offer at any time and get another one in a day or two in this market, so they've got the leverage, right? So when it comes to cosmetic issues like a cracked tile, maybe some peeling paint, or that doggone ice maker that's not working, a lot of home sellers are gonna choose to go with another offer that doesn't ask for all that stuff instead of paying out of pocket to keep going with this offer. Now from a buyer's perspective, these issues are absolutely an inconvenience. But remember, the seller has a lot of leverage here, right? They have other offers, other people, the inventory is extremely low, so they can pick and choose which offer they wanna go with. Now, when you get big issues, right? I'm talking major mechanical issues, roof leaks, mold, things like that, that were not disclosed initially, these items tend to be more negotiable. I'm talking about roof issues, AC issues, heater issues, those are major issues. So again, it is a seller's market, so it can be challenging, but because these larger items that were undisclosed impact the actual value of the home, right? So we're seeing a difference in home value. Again, because it's a seller's market, it can be challenging to negotiate. But remember, these big ticket items that now have issues but weren't initially disclosed, they're impacting the value of the property. When I go back to that curled shingle or that cracked tile, right, one cracked tile, those small things really don't have an impact on the value of the property. But when you have a five, ten thousand dollar AC unit replacement that's needed, or you have a roof leak that might cost four, five, six thousand dollars, that changes the value of the property. When the seller's agent came in and originally gave that seller the value of the property, they were likely basing all of the comparable solds 
on the fact that everything in the home was in proper working condition. When a major item pops up and it's not in working condition, obviously that's gonna have an impact on value, right? So as an example, if you've got a $10,000 roof issue that pops up, the home is worth roughly $10,000 less than if the issue hadn't popped up. So as an example, if you've got a $10,000 roof issue that pops up, it's understandable that the home would be worth roughly $10,000 less than if it was in good condition. Now, it is expected that buyers take any disclosed issues or issues you can obviously see with your eyes into consideration when they're making that initial offer. So if you've got an AC that doesn't work or they're disclosing that they've got some mold in a back bedroom, do your research, do your due diligence, find out what it is numbers wise that it would take you to overcome those issues and add that into your initial offer. This will spare you so much emotional energy and it gives you better odds of getting to that closing table in the end. I don't know if you know this, but humans are emotional beings. Even the most professional of real estate agents can get burnt out on all the back and forth and the nickel and diming. I've seen both buyers and sellers and agents feel, and that's the big word, feel, like they're being taken advantage of in the post-inspection negotiation. And a lot of times, I agree with them. But sometimes it results in the person spending a dollar to save a dime doesn't make a lot of sense. So let me end with two eye-opening examples of this and what I suggest you look at instead. All right, so number one, I had a buyer who loved the home, put in a great offer, the seller accepted, we found a window that had a crack in it. Now at the time we looked at the home, they had window treatments over the window, so you couldn't see the crack in the window. It made sense. The seller did not disclose the window crack in the seller's disclosures, and the inspector found it at the time of inspection. Now I was with the buyer, right, so we felt that that was a reasonable request. Pay $300 and we will take care of the window or you can fix the window. It's up to you. And that was it. That was all we were asking for. The seller said no. And in the reply, even though it stung a little bit, it made sense. The listing agent came back and said, Joe, we can get another buyer in here in two to three days with just as good, if not better an offer. We can disclose the window on day one and we're not gonna have an issue with it. Now, if you get anything out of this video, here comes the most monstrous statement I'm about to make. It doesn't matter what anyone feels is right, fair, or normal. What matters is taking the information in front of you and making the best decision possible. So for this couple, it sucked that they were out 300 bucks. There's no better way to say it. But this home, even after losing the $300, carried so much more value than plan B. Whatever that plan was, it made sense for them to move forward with it. It hit them in here. It hit their ego, it hurt, because they knew it should be fixed. It's fair to fix it. That's what they were telling themselves. But when it comes to your dream home, why would you give it up for $300, right? And that finally sunk into their heads and they moved forward with it. All right, so let me give you another example and this one is a little bit more painful. This was years ago and again, I had the buyer. It was a $300,000 home. We came in at 290 and we got it, which I told them in the market we were in was a phenomenal, phenomenal pickup. Of course, the inspection rolls around and we find that there is an AC not working. Grand total? $5,000. So of course, we asked the seller to pay for it. Now, little did we know the seller was in a tough position. They had no equity left in the house. They couldn't pay for it if they wanted to. So they came back and they said, sorry, but no. Now again, let me repeat this monstrous statement. I'm reading this word for word. It is important. It doesn't matter who's right, who's fair, or what anyone considers normal. What matters is taking all the information provided and making the best decision you can. So in this scenario, the buyer was taking on a $5,000 issue that they did not know they'd have to take on. But because they got that $10,000 discount off the value, they were still getting a $5,000 deal. Yes, it hurt. But there was no plan B. These guys had to be out of their home within weeks, they wanted new construction, and they wanted acreage. In their price range, there were only a handful of options, and trust me, we'd looked at all of them. So the way I presented it to them was, let's look at plan B. With plan B, you're gonna have to find a short-term rental, which good luck already, 
you're gonna have to overpay on that rental because they're not gonna charge you the same as they would charge someone who was there for a full 12 months. They're gonna have to charge you more for the short term. Instead of paying to move once, you're gonna have to pay to move twice. You're also gonna have the storage costs. And don't forget about all the added time and the huge inconvenience. Oh, and by the way, we still don't have a house. So even though plan A stung a little bit, it hit the ego, man. When you look at plan B versus plan A, plan A was obviously the most intelligent decision they could make. After sleeping on it for a night, they said, Joe, it sucks, but this is the decision we're making, and they move forward. So I wanna end with this. The big takeaway here is, not every negotiation is gonna be perfect. There's going to be pain involved. It's okay, it sucks, but it's okay. Always compare plan A to plan B and pick the most intelligent plan, period. He who can make a decision with the least amount of emotion and the most amount of logic is always gonna win long term. All right, thank you so much for watching. I sincerely appreciate it. If you ever need help with anything real estate on Florida's Treasure Coast, feel free to email me anytime and I'll get back to you immediately. Thanks again, and you guys stay fired up. <laughs>